Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is Manolo, the Abundant Alchemist, here at Cypher Session. And what's going on, everybody? It's Enrique. We are back and in full effect. Everybody, uh, all right. I can hear you. You can hear me. Everything good? I can hear you. You can hear we were me. Having How a bit you doing, of a time earlier. All right. I'm doing excellent. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin possibly breaking some resistance. We're going to get into that. Okay. And some stories. Let's do so, it. Let's do it ready whenever you let's are. Let's get this going. Let me pull up the chart. Bear with me one second here as I look up the correct window while you do that uh yes Joe please something uh uh on the family side he had to attend to and so uh he's doing that so he'll uh he'll be joining us next week and we weren't able to record last week um some personal issues and some breaks just to kind of recharge the battery but here we are again back in uh full force and let's get to as it as soon as i have there we go let's share that let me know if you see perfect yeah you see it perfect yes, all right so this is xrp i uh, was you know what let's let's do a little xrp Ooh. Let's do a little XRP here. Ooh. So we'll do I was XRP um, with my with my H bar hat. Keep going. Yeah, why not? <laughs> right. So Wait, I hold was. On, uh, hold on. Should I switch hats? Hold on. You, you want to switch it up? Yeah, you're gonna do XRP. Hold on. So, all right, go for it. I was um, teaching class. I'm a teacher yep. now. Um, and oh, how's that going? Over, it's going excellent, man. Uh, we started Monday. And I was just doing a follow-up video here. We um, were going over EMAs, right, okay. moving averages. Yep. And I was just noting how um, with the 20-day mo moving average, whenever price action moves above it, that is yep. generally a, a bullish uh, signal. Uh, of course, we've been seeing over the uh, past couple of days a little resistance here in the, at the 85-cent mark. Mm -hmm. uh, trend lines, you know, since February 9th up until now uh, is showing us that we've been kind of between the 91 mark, 91 cent mark and the 61, 62 cent mark, but we've been moving up. Uh, I believe that by the 3rd of April, there will be a decision to be made and I believe it's going to be a to the upside okay. um but you know that's still to be determined we do have some room here we could go back down as far as 80 um and that will still be in the trend of bullishness for xrp so let's take a look at so Bitcoin. real quick though, just yep. a, just a quick question on the xrp chart right absolutely so april 3rd we're expecting an upward move or we're we're trending or downward what are we thinking by april 3rd what type so of can we see? It, it could be either but okay because of the movement since the 4th of march that we can see right here it's been a clear uptrend it's just okay. been the last one two, three, four days that we've seen clear resistance here at this level of about 85 cents. It uh, spiked a bit higher up to the top of this box here at 86 cents, and that was on the 22nd. And we have yet to enter that box once again. Get your mind out of the gutters, guys. But uh, I think, you know, with everything How going looking? on, we're looking, we're I think looking we're looking bullish, good. Bearish? I, yeah. we're, we're definitely, you know, in an uptrend. So we're looking bullish. Um, also, price action is, like I said, above the 20-day moving average. Uh, what will be really bullish is as soon as we get the 20-day moving average above this 200-day moving average. 
Mm -hmm. that's when we tend to see a clear break upwards. So all in all, it is looking really good. I'm anticipating a move up uh, because the opposite is true. Whenever the 20-day moving average depicted by this green line crosses that purple line, which is the 200-day moving average, we start seeing movement downward. So clear uptrend right now, um, kind of balanced on the volume as far as selling and buyers go, but it's coming to a head right here. How's volume looking? Um, I mean, it's been dropping off. We haven't seen that many buyers since the 8th of February. Um, it's kind of even. So, you know, that's kind of expected with what we're seeing here on the trend lines. Okay. Um, so, you know, if you have a wealthy uncle out there, some, some someone in our audience, tell them to buy some XRP and away we'll go. At a discount. Gotcha. At a discount. Exactly. Um, let's take a look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin. I have been ping ponging between bearish and bullish. We have very nice resistance here at about the, excuse me, uh, support at about the $37,000 mark. We have wicked down the 24th of February. And since then, we have not gone back to those levels. We're seeing a big W here formation, which, which tends to be bullish and micro Ws in between. We had a great day today here, uh, moving from 42 five and a half to about 44, 100, you could say. The boss to beat is this level right here between 44, 700 and 45 and a half. Um, what I would like to see and you could see that the trend line that I had drawn previously has been broken north. So that's very nice. Um, so long as we don't go back below 42, we could even give Bitcoin the breathing room to kind of dance sideways. Okay. Right? Um, I would say, yeah, 42, even 40, you know? even 40 because then we'd be going uh, on this trend line north. So even 40, we could give the breathing room for Bitcoin. But since we're here, we just have a little bit more to go. There's, there's huge resistance here that, you know, we've tested one, two times so far. Let's see if this third time is a charm. Um, as you see here in my notes, the definition of a bear market is a 20% drop in price or more of any given uh, commodity uh, equity asset. We've definitely gone down way below 20%, but now uh, we have a few bosses to beat. So this is this would be just the first one of many more on our way to retest the all-time high of about 61, I think. May have been a little more, but um, yeah, all, all in all, uh, with the altcoins being affected positively by Bitcoin's move, I'm feeling good at least uh, for the remaining week moving ahead. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, it's looking good. So, so what are you thinking will happen here? Are you thinking we'll see potentially? um a little bit of a bitcoin rally that'll then take us into an altcoin rally or are you expecting to see kind of bitcoin level off and then we see an altcoin rally or what are you thinking so it uh it depends because sorry about that that's my All good. alerts uh okay so Bitcoin has been known to get going and leave alts in the dust. 
that yep. is always possible, especially as, and we're going to touch on these stories um, moving um, forward, uh, especially if institutions finally gain clarity and go all in. You know, I, I see them dabbling more in Bitcoin, Ethereum, the main, maybe top five coins, maybe top 10. But if that's the case, you, we're going to see, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum rip. And, uh, you know, that will be positive for all coins, but it, there would just be some form of lag before we see alts really rip. Um, okay. But even with that said, there's always certain little pockets in the altcoin space that tend to do really, really well. Um, I think uh, Anchor, was it? Um, there's been a, a couple that have done like 60%, you know, and you could look it up on uh, cryptobubbles.com where you could see what assets are doing, uh, what type of moves percentage wise. Yeah. Um, but anything could happen. I, I really, um, I think to kind of make a, a judgment call on that, I would have to take a look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, um, which last time that I saw, it was kind of falling. So, dude, I'm gonna maybe... play. I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second. Sure. Just to get your take on this. Um, okay. I I read something that. Um, Russia is potentially thinking about adopting Bitcoin, right? Do you think if they do that, right, with all the sanctions that are already being imposed on them, do you think that that will drive um, the U.S. and possibly the EU to get more aggressive on the sanctions of Bitcoin? because of the fact that then they'll say, all right, look, it's, we have to put sanctions on it for X, Y, Z. And I mean, there's already the talk around the, um, the carbon neutral cryptocurrencies as well. So mm -hmm. do you think if that happens, right, forget about the carbon neutral aspect, we'll, we'll take, we'll dissect that later. But mm -hmm. if Russia says, you know what, we're going all in on Bitcoin, right. And the U S and the EU, um, sanction it do you think we could see a big dip i mean i'm just i'm playing devil's advocate mm -hmm. um so what i would look at first because i read a story yesterday about russia requesting to be paid in rubles for their oil yep in order to put a stranglehold on the eu so i don't see them dropping the ball on that demand in order so to you shift don't see their focus them, into Bitcoin right you away. You don't see them dropping the demand on the ruble. Right, right. Because, but the ruble super weak though right now. So yeah. would you want to get paid in rubles? Or would you want to get paid in something like gold or Bitcoin that has more value right now? Because like No, yeah, definitely. I, I'd rather get paid in um, Bitcoin, but I, I don't know how that would work. You know, since everybody right now is holding rubles, they've already gotten 40%, at, I think, at least, uh, yeah. drawdown on the money that yeah. they, they're holding. And so if they would make a switch to Bitcoin, like, are the bag holders of the ruble going to just get destroyed for the greater good? That would be oh, a tough call for uh, the leader to make. Yeah, um, I mean, I think I think there's a lot of currency devaluation going on in Russia mm -hmm. right now, overall, right? Like, I mean, yep. the, the ruble's taken a huge hit ever since this whole thing started, and with all these sanctions and the other <laughs> sanctions that they're imposing, right? You could you could probably um, pick up a, a a barrel of rubles now for ten bucks, but right, right. Uh, it's just interesting to see. I just I I glazed over something that hinted on the potential of, and I guess with everything going on and the SWIFT sanctions and all this and that, um, the potential for them to be accepting something in, in the form of um, Bitcoin. And then I thought to myself, wait, wait a minute, with all the sanctions that are going on, if that plays out, it was just a, a thought experiment. Yeah. If that yeah. plays out, 
than what happens potentially to the price of Bitcoin if they sanction it. Although you can't really sanction it because it's Bitcoin, but if they sanction the on and off right. ramps, you right. know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think let's just say that that does happen. Russia adopts Bitcoin as their currency, uh, like El Salvador and other nations that are doing it now. Um, and then they counter by sanctioning these platforms short term it would be kind of rocky for bitcoin what's new mm. but then long term they're going to figure out a way to circumvent those sanctions like they're doing anyway um and just maybe use decentralized uh platforms i mean it would be difficult to adopt right away so I think it would take months, if not more. Yeah. Yeah. So be interesting to see though what happens if, if that because there's a lot of things playing out globally that are currently impacting the current state of all economics, right? I mean, stock yep. market, crypto market. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's just gonna be interesting to see how um things play out over the course of the next few months. Yeah, yeah. With that said. Would you like to get into uh, the story on the Fed? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Let's man. Let's get For into sure. that. Let's see. Yeah. Do you see uh, See it on yep. your end? Fed yep. Chair Powell. Yep. Yeah. So Fed Chair Powell on Wednesday actually stated that there will be new rules needed for crypto. Uh, and that makes all the sense in the world to me, right? If you think about it right now, when you hear Gary Gensler speaking about cryptocurrencies, he always makes a comment that um, there's already rules in place and there's already uh, regulations that are in place, right? And so they're using um, the Howey test, which is a, a very old test um, that came up years ago with regards to a, a farmer, I believe that was trying to sell oranges mm. in Florida. And so as a result mm. of that, they came out with these parameters in order to determine what it was, what is or is not a security. Right. And so, but I think that this is a completely new asset class. It's a brand new technology and trying to kind of engulf new technology with old laws is, I don't think it makes sense to me. So this article kind of goes into something along that vein where he's just saying that we just need new regulations around crypto, right? They're going to be dominating all aspects of future, future life, right? So you need to be able to create regulations that apply to, to modern day technology. So I thought it was an interesting article and it's the, the Fed chair that's saying it. Um, and so the fact that the Fed chair is commenting on the fact that there's a need for new regulation around crypto, I think is just um, him co-signing on the fact that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. So I think it was just interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed. I agree, they are here to stay. Um, and something to add to that um, yeah. is that, you know, the U.S. has confiscated the U.S. has confiscated quite a bit of Bitcoin. So they actually do have some skin in the game. So it's really in yeah. their best interest also. Like I imagine that they're thinking or somebody, there's got to be somebody with a brain there, right? That That's thinking, all right, we're devaluing the dollar, but we have this thing that can save us. Yeah. And so it's, so it's, it's interesting and 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 my bad to 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 mm. to kind of uh run in on that but when we had santiago on the show and you think about interoperability of cryptocurrencies right um the question was historically there is this overlay from one superpower then getting dethroned or overthrown by another superpower right so that's been the historical way that things have functioned. So my question to him was, 
do you think that because where we are right now, technically China stands to overthrow the U S but my right. question to him was in a future where interoperability exists and every country is a network, then th theoretically you no longer need a superpower, which has a dominant currency, right? You just right. have individual countries operating, but there's a bridge <clears throat> currency that kind of allows everyone to interoperate. And so you go back to that old cliche saying of you level the playing field for everyone globally. So it would be interesting to see where we go from here. Will we go to a place where the United States of America is overthrown by another superpower? Or are we kind of past those phases where there is one country that dominates globally and they have the world reserve currency and they have this way to kind of weaponize their currency and do whatever they want, hmm. which is very fascinating to think about if we're getting away from that because of blockchain yeah. and we're entering this more um, network-ish, independent, but bridge currency-based society. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. So the future is just yeah. super bright. So yeah yeah I, I find it I, I don't think we'll ever let one nation be the dominating currency reserve currency like we've seen what that does and yeah. you know the nations I, I don't think they would put themselves in that position again uh we've spoken about sdrs maybe that's the yep. closest thing that we could get to where it's just a, a bucket of different currencies being considered the reserve currency um but well we have they they have the sdr now the standard draw okay okay so you have the us with the majority of the percentage within mm, the SDR, okay. right Got so it. It, with but that's a that's a very interesting point right because within that vein if you create a standard drawing rights basket right mm -hmm. and you you put various countries within that basket but you don't give a country a dominating percentage over right. the globe then you decrease that global reserve dominance and then theoretically speaking what you could do or hypothetically you could create a bridge asset in the in the middle of this sdr that kind of um neutral operates yeah it's it's neutral it's it's there is no dependency you can't you know so it is possible mm -hmm. so but it's an interesting point that you brought up yeah yes so let's uh check out this other story on uh, coindesk yeah so i thought this was interesting um it's a dow um so for those that don't know what DAO is, it's Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Mm -hmm. And so what they're thinking about doing is they're, they're thinking about creating a DAO for sport team ownership. And so you would potentially give um, people that have a stake in this DAO um, the rights to determine like draft picks for a team. Hmm. And so if you're like, let's just say you're a, a fan, let's say, and you're part of this DAO, and you put a lot of money into this DAO, if the Knicks are making a draft pick and you're not for that draft pick, you have a vote, which I think hmm. is super interesting. You know, I think that's, the future yeah. of that, if you potentially go down that road and you expand on it, then you get to the point where individual, if we go into individual ownership, hmm. then you have multiple people with ownerships of something and then they can make a, a collective decision, especially if the majority of that are fans, right? Right. So you think of how many fans right now watch sports and they criticize managers and they criticize owners. Right. Now, can you imagine when the ownership is on fans and they have stakes in the sports franchise and they can vote on um, uh, draft picks and stuff like that? It, I just thought it was an interesting concept and the future yeah. of that in the it, sports space. Definitely interesting. You know, I've always found it funny when people 
or talking about my team, my team. And it's like, dude, you're not the owner. It's not really your team. But yeah. this really would actually make it possible for you to say my team and it is your team. So yeah, yeah. And very, I mean, dude, very interesting. Like, like if you think about it in a way, when you invest in the stock market, you're a stockholder. So you own stocks in the company. Right. Right. So this would be a similar instance where you're 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 an owner in a share of the franchise. Mm -hmm. And so the more and I'm going to just speak in terms of shares, the more shares that you own, the more rights that you have and the more your vote counts. I think it's just fascinating that we're going down this road of um, ownership. And, and so if you think about that as an investor, you could have your pot and, you know, you could have your hands in multiple teams. You could have your hands in multiple companies. I, I, I think right. the possibilities are endless. Yeah. And I think it also creates another form of a revenue stream for teams. Yeah. You know, because absolutely. you know, right. Cause now you have people that are actually investing in the team. So the money that the, the, the team is getting additional funds, the people mm -hmm. that don't have ownership, but still go to the games and the concessions are selling stuff and advertisement. Mm -hmm. And so it's an additional revenue source. I think it's interesting. That's very interesting because, you know, especially in baseball, um, when, you know, the Yankees were dying, were a dynasty and dominating, you know, people used to criticize it, the team, um, because of the money that they had to buy all these great players Right. But now we may be shifting into the team's lo location and the population around that team being what makes a team great. So that's exactly. very interesting. And some people you know, won't like it. Some people will. But it's a complete shift. And yeah. then that reminds me also of one of my favorite coins, um, Audius, right? Okay. So you, artists could raise money and have their fans support them on like their next project. So it's like a way to fundraise uh, in the music art scene, but uh, you you have direct uh, skin in the game on your favorite artist. And, you know, if he flops, you know, that may be a loss on that coin. And if the project does as well, it's gonna help uh, Audius um, do better uh, moves on the charts, so. Dude, very, I very think, interesting. I think to just if I could add one more one more comment to that, right? Yeah. To the music, right? If you think about it, all these record labels are giving artists a fraction of their sales, right? So you have mm -hmm. a lot of these artists that really aren't seeing the majority of their money, and right. they are the actual talent. Right. And so when you think about this coin that you just posed, what you're doing is you're taking the power away from these large record labels and you're putting them you're putting it back into the hands of the artists like if you if you conceptualize that and you break mm -hmm. it down right you're actually giving artists more independence they're having the possibility to create their own revenue right so if you're selling and people buy you know be it through this coin you can keep the majority of your sales right you don't need this middleman to negotiate a contract and give you 30 percent. you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i i think it's just i think that in a lot of the realms we're getting back to a place where artists content creators are taking the power back into their own hands and shifting it away from the middleman I think that's yeah, ultimately absolutely. where we're going. Yeah. And, and so it's like we're seeing that in sports. We're seeing that in music. Um, we're going to probably start seeing that in media, right? We're, we're going to stream via YouTube. But I think more and more uh, there's going to be ways to directly get content from their creators, you 100%. know? It's just very interesting. Like I, I kind of have to wrap my mind around how that would even work. Because then, how how would you find Cipher Session if we're not on a centralized platform like YouTube? Well, you know? I, I think I think it it all really goes to um, 
community, right? So yeah. if it's not YouTube, right. then it becomes something that's more decentralized. Mm. And the three of us start something on a decentralized platform because we want to be desensitized. There's other people on that decentralized platform. Right. And so within that community, you're starting to share networks. And then right. what I think would potentially happen is you have a decentralized network in which you're operating, right? But because you have the ability to interoperate, let's just say that you, you Johan and I create ABC productions under mm -hmm. the centralized network A, mm -hmm. but there's another decentralized network B that mm -hmm. operates something completely different, right? But we're able to interoperate, then we'll be able to get viewers that are able to, like um, Santiago was saying, right. fractionalize streams across decentralized platforms and, and almost ingest whatever content they want without being married to one one platform. You know what right. I mean? So we may be like on the crypto decentralized platform, but we could still get viewers from like the sports decentralized 100%. platform. Right. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So let me share this uh, story here. Fox Business. Is it coming up on the stream? Yep, Streamer. Goldman Sachs. All right, perfect. Yep. Yeah, so Goldman Sachs, and this is from Fox Business, published on the 21st. Goldman Sachs makes OTC, which is over-the-counter crypto trade, first for major Wall Street banks. So, you know, o OTC pretty much means um, it's a private deal between two parties. So this uh, company, Galaxy Digital Holdings, uh, provided Goldman Sachs um, with its first uh, crypto trade, which is signaling a wider adoption. Yeah. Um, you know, more and more institutions, you could say, from Wall Street banks uh, will be more than likely yep. following suit on Goldman Sachs. And I think this is super bullish, not just for Bitcoin, but crypto as a whole. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Damien Vanderbilt, co-president of the head of global markets at Galaxy Digital. And I think that's uh, Novogratz, right? Like Novogratz? Yeah. Galaxy I think Digital. So. Yeah. Said the transaction is expected to open the door for other banks considering over the counter as a conduit for trading digital assets. So what do you what do you think about that? Dude, I want to bring up I want to bring up two points, right? It it you're speaking about banks and I want to stay on that path, but follow me on this one. Okay? All right. I'm going to say something that, that that's all along the, the, the lines, but okay. When COVID started, mm -hmm. right. The United States postal service filed a patent in order mm -hmm. for them to be able to divvy out funds to people. There was an okay. article that came out the other day that would potentially turn postal service uh, post offices mm -hmm. into banks where you could go in and make deposits and interact with amounts up to $500, right? So just mm -hmm. think about this, right? Most places don't have banks, but most places have a post office. Right. So if you think about the number of post offices in the US and supplement those, right? You have potential, um, quote unquote, banking institutions in the form of post offices, right? And especially mm -hmm. if you think of the fact that everything is going online and digital, what right. are you going to do with all the all the post office landmarks, right? Then you have the Office of Comptroller of Currency when Brian Brooks was in office that he gave banks the right to custody crypto, right? So it would Hold be- on. we have a uh, commercial. Coming up here on uh, Fox Business. Sorry about that. No, no, it's all good. All right, take care of that. So what what I want to say is now that we're looking at at that Goldman Sachs article, right? Are we thinking mm -hmm. that? Because like when I think about this, right? What what do we think? will happen in the future? Do we think there'll be a future where exchanges are the 
intermediaries between the user and crypto? Or are we thinking that banks that can custody crypto will now be able to custody all cryptos? And instead mm -hmm. of you going on to Bitstamp or Coinbase to buy your cryptocurrency, you go to your bank and you get your crypto. Or if the post office takes it to the next level, um, it, it, it's just, I guess, from that article, I'm just thinking about the future of custody on crypto. Where does it lie? Is it with banks? Is it with exchanges? And when I saw that on the post office, mm -hmm. do they have some type of um, hand in it? Or do we think it's just something completely different? All that stuff just like mm -hmm. boggles my brain. Yeah, two things with that. Um, it makes me bullish on post office NFTs that I've been seeing <laughs> yeah, on sure. Vivi. Um, you know, because if this whole thing is evolving and like, are we going to, I don't know, are we going to even need stamps? And, you know, is that like something that's going to be outdated in time? Probably. It's going to probably be something barcode or something but that and then um i think banks have to kind of figure out a way to custody crypto because 100%. if not um like what's going to be the need for them uh, besides, you know like 100 i think you're right yeah yeah i think you're right dude <laughs> huh it's just imagine just imagine a world where everything is interoperating and you have crypto and banks don't want to give you the ability to go in and say, you know what? I don't, I want to, so, you know, like right now when you work, you have the ability to like, let's say that you're getting uh, paychecks. You have the ability to say, I want three different checking accounts, this amount here, this amount here, this amount here. Right. Right. In the future, right. If banks are, custody in crypto, you could say, I want to get 33% in Bitcoin. I want to get 33% mm. in XRP. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, do we think mm -hmm. do we, like, that would be insane. That would be wild. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, you're paying a bill or you're, you're charging somebody and you're like, this is how I want to be paid. Yeah. That's, that would be amazing. That I, I see that happening. hundred percent. I definitely see that happening. Huh? All right, and so I'm going to lead with that into something I don't personally talk about too much, but Dogecoin. Ooh, Dogecoin. So it seems that there's been a bullish reversal from current levels on Doge. Um, I noted on the, on the charts that, you know, we – have seen highs of 27 cents. We're now at about 0.137137 as of this recording. So that's an easy double on your money if we can get to see some kind of mania like we did with uh, Elon on Saturday Night Live. And if there's anything to say about Elon Musk, he's not really a one trick pony when it comes to uh, being a troll. <laughs> he could figure out a way how to get attention. I wouldn't underestimate um, his ability to make the masses excited about something. Yeah. Um, you know, Dogecoin looks oversold with a decline of 84% from the highs. And personally, as a trader, this is when I start licking my lips. Because there's so much upside. The majority of people are disgusted with it. They forget about it. It's like this chart right here. <laughs> is that Doge? That is Doge. You see, and we've been just kind of going in a, in a steady line. And what I've seen with price action like that yeah. is that sometimes, not always, but sometimes you see the horizontal move you could see the equivalent eventually on the vertical end which Dude, would be I, insane 
am I reading that right? Is the is 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 Doge have a five almost a five percent over on the S and P? What were you hovering over there that you saw? Um, bullish on Dogecoin for reversal. Doge USD changed to date five point forty five. No, you see that little you see that little box on the right where it has like Doge over S and P. Hover oh, back oh, over oh, that chart. Oh, oh. this one. No, Down no, no. Here? Go go back up. Go back up to the one above it. Right there. You see right there that little box that just popped up? Yeah. So it says uh, Doge USD change to date is 5.45%. And S&P 500 change to date 0.47%. Um, so are, we thinking, are, are they saying that Doge is outperforming S&P at this point? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I, I'm not gonna interesting say a hundred percent, but I think that that's what it's showing. I, I didn't even see that when I was reading this article. Um, but uh, yeah, so a lot more companies looking to likely accept Dogecoin as a payment method. You know, this thing started as a meme. Um, then we had Elon back it and. Getting you a lot have, of attention. Uh, you even have Mark Cuban, right? Didn't Mark Cuban mm, say that mm -hmm. the Dallas Mavericks were thinking of accepting mm -hmm. Doge's payment? Yep. Look, yep. dude, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I'm not a Doge owner by any means, but Doge has a pretty big community. Mm -hmm. So 4.2 million holders. Exactly. And if so, oh, how did you know that? Did Where did you see that? Uh, the article. <laughs> oh, I was yeah, going to yeah. say, if you were looking at something, could you see how many sheep holders there are just because I want to be weird like that? But <laughs> um, at the end of the day, if we get to a point where there's regulatory clarity and mm -hmm. Dogecoin fits neatly into that regulation box, mm -hmm. then Doge holders may be in for a ride. But, yep. you know, if it doesn't, then, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm... I, I got into a little trade of Doge today. I went kind of heavy and I got out again because I kind of see some kind of resistance. But um, I wouldn't put it past Elon to somehow incorporate Dogecoin with some kind of service in Tesla. Like think about maybe, I don't know, if I don't know how the charging stations work, but imagine if he said, you know, from now on, we're accepting only Doge. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's heavy handed because then I think a lot of Tesla owners that don't owe don't own Doge <laughs> will be left out. But I think if he right. says we now will accept Doge and you'll get a 10 percent discount when you pay with Doge. Exactly. Then, then what I think is you then you satisfy your current customers mm -hmm. and you actually create another customer base for Doge holders that have made. You know, and then I, 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 like I, if you think about how that would be hmm. conceptually <laughs> interesting is especially because of the fact that gas prices are so cheap right now. Um, and I'm being funny hmm. when I say that. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to do something like that and then you would have a shift in, in owners moving more towards but I, I, again you still need infrastructure right right for, you need for, some for form of infrastructure stations. yeah exactly so where my mind is going is like what if and what if that works right what if that works will other car dealers car uh, companies follow suit because doesn't that have a ring to it doge dodge oh what if dodge would say all right tesla we're going to, I don't know, I'm, that's just my yeah, mind going crazy, yeah, yeah. but that would yeah. be very, very interesting. Um, you never know. You never know. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what uh, Elon has up his sleeve? The future is the future is bright, dude. I've seen mm -hmm. things where people actually use their Teslas to mine coins. Mm -hmm. I, I saw right? something as about that. As yeah. they're driving, right? So you that's could even, crazy. You could even give drivers that have electronic vehicles incentives in the form of cryptocurrency right like if you were a tesla that got in on doge so early that you have a ton of it you could start giving tesla drivers incentive 
in the form of Doge coins, right? You, you make then, it, a, you make it a game. And let's make it even crazier. Then what if Uber hops on the Doge bandwagon? Yeah. You know, accepting Doge as payment, and it, it could get nuts. Yeah. But, um, I, or other or other cryptos. Or, or other, other cryptos, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But speaking of other cryptos, Cardano, thirty three percent pump um to a high of one dollar 18 after Oof. a very boring sideways couple of weeks i would say transaction volume is ahead of bitcoin um there's million of native assets being issued on decentralized apps just recently the four millionth cardano nft was minted um and coinbase has introduced cardano staking um it's currently hitting 80 on the rsi meaning that it's a, a bit overbought um since 8 a.m yesterday uh volume has been slowing down so cardano in an interesting spot right now uh i went all in and then got back out seeing a little resistance but uh it, it's getting hot right now it's getting the life hot. of a trader life of a trader is getting <laughs> hot right now with uh you know bitcoin taking the lead and i'm anxious you know to see what xrp does because that i did get into and i don't see a reason to sell right now because i think xrp and cardano too um like bill noble at token metrics i was watching yesterday yeah. said these coins are the type of coins that you could wake up one day and the thing just ripped beyond what you thought rationally the type of move that it, a coin should make 100 percent, uh, especially with this pending sec loss of news so yeah it'd be in, it's gonna be interesting to see um sec is in a very very interesting place right now mm -hmm. i heard they got um, like they, they got swatted twice Yes, yeah, so, right? so they 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 got the they they put forth a motion to almost um, to get rid of the uh, fair notice defense, which is what Ripple is kind of alluding to, mm -hmm. that there just is no regulatory clarity in this space in order for Ripple to have a fair notice as to whether or not XRP is a security or any other token for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that was denied by Judge Netburn. And so now the SEC is needing to produce the Hinman e emails. And I don't know that they want to produce those emails. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see what actually the next. I, I think they, not to cut you, I think they tried to ask for more time. Yeah. They, 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 and and like, it was granted. Oh, okay. It was granted, but the grant of time isn't that great. It's not something that's earth shattering. And it's not okay. something that I don't think was worth uh, Ripple's time to to fight just because it's another week. Okay. Um, and so they have uh, parameters that were set. Ripple has to file a certain reply to the SEC. And the SEC has two weeks from the time that Ripple replies in order to reply. So I think wow. the next month for XRP is going to be super interesting. Hmm. So I think from now until middle of april yeah we should see a lot of fireworks in in all realms of uh of crypto and i'm i'm just super bullish in the crypto space and where it's going and what it's going to do but um it's yeah the, the waiting game right now that's it dude but with that i think we could uh wrap it up what do you think yeah we just hit the 49 minute mark thanks for everybody who's uh hung on and watch till the end. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, anything that you'd like us to cover, your favorite coin or a project that you're wondering, is it legit, is it not? Let us know, hit us up and subscribe. Hit that bell so you'll know when we're on next time. Thank you very much. Cypher out. Cypher out.